Should you invest in gold? Does it make sense to have a part of your portfolio in one of the most trusted and secure assets known to man? Or should you just go with the stock market? Or should you use a blend? Does it play any role in the portfolio? That's what I'm gonna be talking about in today's video. Once again, my name is Ari Taubleib. I am a financial planner and I help people retire early. I'm also the vice president of Root Financial Partners and I'm also the host of the Early Retirement Podcast. I wanna talk about gold and specifically, how do you think through it in terms of what it could do to your other investments? So when people say, Ari, is gold a good investment? I say, to what? Is the stock market a good investment? To what? Is real estate a good investment? To what? What if you had a real estate investment? And I take these basic examples, if you've seen my videos before, because I hope it resonates. If it has, please do comment below. I appreciate that. If you could have a real estate investment that went up a thousand percent every single year, which I know is crazy, but let's just take this crazy example, but it took all of your time, literally 24 hours a day, is that a good investment? I would argue no, because you don't have the time to live life, even if you're getting a great return. Now, same with the stock market. What if you're taking on all this risk, but you're not sleeping well at night? Is that a good investment? No. So when it comes to what is a good investment, it's to what in comparison to what? That's what we're gonna be talking about today and how this impacts your ability to save for retirement, how it impacts your overall retirement goals and taxes. By the way, if gold resonates with you, Keep it in your portfolio because it allows you to stick to a strategy. If it's either gold or not investing at all, I would rather you invest in gold. Once again, part of investing is finding what resonates most with you. I don't believe in black and white investing. The number one thing that I hear when people ask me, Ari, what are your thoughts about gold? Is they'll say, it's a great inflation hedge. That's what they say, it's a great hedge. Does it offer a small role in the portfolio? They'll go, I've heard you talk about diversification. It seems like it's gonna diversify us further. Why would we not consider it? And there's a time to consider it, but I'm gonna be talking about that right now. And I'm gonna talk about it with this example. Let's look at the dot-com in the 90s. Did it make sense that these companies with questionable business models and zero dollars in revenue, did it make sense that they were millions of dollars because they put a dot-com at the end of their name? Does that really make sense? What about tulip mania in 1720s? You've heard those stories. What are tulips worth? Well, it's worth what another person's willing to pay for. And then what happens if prices go up? What does that really mean? Also remember that if you ever feel bad about making a bad investment in the past, remember this. Isaac Newton, who discovered the laws of gravity and motion, he even made a bad investment. He lost the equivalent of $3 million by getting caught up in this fad at the end of the day. So going back to the dot-com, the tulip mania, and how does this impact gold? Well, the way it impacts gold is because we need to think through the lens of what is it worth? Well, there are some practical uses for gold, but for the most part, it's speculation of value. Now it's been a lot around for a long time, so that adds that sense of security, but at the end of the day, that is its core function. It's just worth what people are willing to pay for it, like with anything. However, in terms of functionality, there's not a whole lot to it that makes gold this amazing investment. When I say speculation, that means I'm gonna buy gold, hoping that the price goes up and then someone else wants to buy it from me at a higher price. That's why we buy it. Makes simple enough sense. Well, now let's think about Apple stock. Apple stock isn't worth two and a half trillion dollars of value and growing because it's just accepted. No, it provides value. It generates a huge amount of profits. So when you own Apple stock, you have a right to those profits. You are a shareholder when the company performs well and you're a shareholder, there's the capital appreciation, there's dividends, you have the right to that stock and its profits. I don't even care if you like the iPhone. The whole point of this is if you like an iPhone or don't like an iPhone, you want to profit with your money. So when you do that, you're investing in Apple because they're showing profits. Gold is not showing profits, not an investment that you're saying, great, here's what I'm expecting from it. Now, it doesn't mean that's why we say no to it. There's other considerations here, but let's understand the value first of all. And we can best do this by looking at the performance of gold over time to see, great, has this performed? Does this make sense? Well, I'm gonna put this just up on the screen right here so that you can see how gold has performed as opposed to other stocks. US large caps, um, you can see the gold cumulative, the US large cap cumulative. Let's look at what is that if we put it all together, what's the overall return? Well, you can see here that as we're looking at these, the gold returns just don't hold up. Now, there are certain years where, of course, it outperforms like other times, but look at this example. 
Since 1972, if you put $10,000 invested into either gold or the S&P 500, here's what it did. Gold, your $10,000, became $372,000. So that's certainly valuable. It certainly went up in value. It's not a bad investment. U.S. large caps, otherwise known as the S&P 500 for the most part, went up from $10,000 to $1.43 million, four times as much. Now it's not exactly an apples to apples comparison. Now it's measured by standard deviation, which is how much deviation is occurring in both directions. The worst ever drawdown from gold, meaning the worst it's ever gone down, was 62%, whereas the US stock market, especially this part of the market, was down 51%. So gold's had a worse downturn as opposed to the stock market in this example. But the big thing in my eyes and why this impacts your retirement strategy is gold took 26 years to recover, whereas the US large caps took five years to recover. Now let's not forget this. Some people think the stock market is just rigged or there's something inherently wrong with it or they don't understand it and they refuse to educate themselves or it just scares them for some reason or they've been burned or something's happened that makes them go to gold. And through that $10,000 example where it still became 300,000 plus, the reason I bring it up is it's not a terrible investment but in terms of should I invest in gold compared to the stock market, the stock market historically has just done so much better. Now we go through ups and downs, just like with gold, like with any investment, there's no risk-free investment. Even when they say treasury bills, risk-free. Yeah, it's risk-free in the sense of you're gonna get that return, but not risk-free in sense of inflation protected. Even inflation protected securities, great, that's not gonna grow for you tremendously over time. So the in terms of risk, and how do we think about risk in retirement, I break it down to the following. When you're in retirement, it's not about guessing what asset class is gonna outperform. It's not about gold, it's not saying US large companies, it's not small companies, it's not international, it's not real estate. How can we own a little bit of everything so we don't care what goes up and down? We don't care because we have enough ebbs and flows that are gonna protect ourselves. Now there's then investments like gold that I just don't recommend for clients because the historical performance is not there to show me it provides enough of a role in their portfolio. I see that the stock market plays a very important role. Pension, rental income, social security, inheritance, these are things that play big roles. What we choose to invest those funds in are very important. Now, if you say, Ari, I don't care. I get the numbers make sense. I've seen the education, it, it, it resonates, but I just want gold to have a small part of my portfolio because I sense that value and I want that then great, we're keeping gold in the portfolio. This is not something that's gonna make or break your retirement. Now, if you were to come to me and go, Ari, I want 80% in gold and 20% in the stock market, and here's how I want, I'd say, great, let's have a conversation about it and how that impacts your goals. And we might come to a solution that makes sense to you. We might say, you know what? I'm not the best fit to help because the philosophies don't align. That's okay too. So please remember when it comes to creating these, these plans for you, when it comes to a secure investment, I don't view gold up there because I don't like gold. I don't view gold up there in terms of why I would invest in it because it doesn't have profits. It's not showing me, hey, here's tremendous value in this investment as opposed to this other investment. We have to remember it's always compared to something. Gold, that's awesome. Compared to what? How's the stock market doing? How's real estate doing? We have to compare it to that alternative to know is it a good investment? Does it make sense in our plan? The overall conclusion is gold can be a good asset class depending on what time frame you look at, but that's with any investment. So what I would say is the conclusion is if you wanted to own a small part of your portfolio because that's important to you, then certainly include it because it's that peace of mind, it's that sleep factor, but know that historically you're not gonna get the same returns as the stock market. If you want it to be a major part of your portfolio, I would urge you to read more on it. I have other podcasts and YouTube videos to get a sense of where gold fits into your plan. I don't personally recommend it for clients because I don't see that it has has that weight, I don't see the historical performance and I don't see the value that it creates. However, I do know it plays a role for some people in that sleep factor, which too many people don't consider in my opinion. So it's not a black and white thing. This planning thing is fully customized and gold, when we look at it, has different opinions. I'm gonna get a ton of comments I know of, Ari, but gold's done this through these years and it's had this effect and here's why it's been around for so long and I get it. I just look solely through what historically would be the best for my clients and that's how I base my decisions. So want your feedback as always. If you're looking for a custom plan, this is what I help people do. Myself or a member of my team would be happy to walk you through our process to see how we help people create their ideal retirement and then above and beyond that, 
if you're just looking for more guidance on investing, on saving on taxes, on putting together a great plan, please subscribe so that you can see more videos and share it with someone else who you think would find it helpful. It's more fun to retire with people as opposed to on your own, even if it's with your spouse or your friends. So thank you for doing so and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you don't know, I am the host of the Early Retirement Podcast, and this is what I love doing. I help people create a custom strategy to retire early. You can always reach out to me or a member of our team here at Root, and we would be happy to walk you through our planning process to show you how we can help you get more life out of your money.